Greetings everyone and welcome back to a new video. I have a highly sophisticated recording rig that I recently picked up so I could do these recordings outside and maybe the quality be a little bit better. Um, it's a bio-locational oscillatory um, exchanger or box if you prefer. Uh, <laughs> it's a cardboard box. But we're going to try this out and see if it can cut down on the wind. Anyway, that's not why we're here today. We're here to talk about Books Frigate, which is, uh, I mean, this is a crazy looking ship. Uh, I have not been watching Discovery. Uh, my wife and I are going to start on that when we're done with Enterprise. And yeah, so there is some crazy looking stuff coming out of that show. And this is definitely one of the crazier ones. Uh, it kind of looks like one of the Janeways in the cells that, you know, the, the ones that aren't attached that came loose <laughs> and became its own ship. <laughs> <sighs> anyway, they have a little movie here for it. And this is actually pretty good. Uh, they've been doing these the last couple of times here. Uh, they don't always do these little cinematic movies, but they started doing them more recently, and it looks good. I'm not going to play it. You know, I'm not going to try and do some video and video thing here. You can go uh, check it out yourself. It's on the blog post, which will be in the description, or you could just go to the Star Trek Online YouTube page. But yeah, they do a good job with these. Um, very nice video. So it's going to be added to the uh, Infinity Box, the same way as the last ship was, the Jovian. So pretty interesting. This is the second uh, lockbox ship. They're sticking straight into the Infinity Box. Um, a little bit um, not sure what's going on with that. It could be that they had a, uh, a systems uh, position that they only recently filled. They also had people go to Magic uh, Legends games, so... It's hard to say. They might be just understaffed, or maybe they're trying to uh, make some changes to the way they do lockboxes or whatever. I don't know, but it is a little bit interesting that they've decided to stick two new ships in the Infinity Box without releasing them in their own box. It does have one repercussion because uh, the 32nd Century weapons, which also come on this ship, like the Janeway, uh, are not available because there isn't a new lockbox. So that they kicked the can further down the road on that one. The ones that come on this ship are non-upgradable, but uh, you still get a chance to play around with them. They are the ones that give you cooldown reduction. And uh, this is going to be added to the Infinity Box on May 4th. There's other exciting news as well. This is not the only thing coming to the Infinity Box. I don't know if I even want to try and pronounce this. Um, I'm guessing based on the way they pronounce things in Star Trek, it's uh, Quajillion would be my guess. Quajillion pilot frigate. It's probably wrong. Uh, frigates are kind of an interesting class of ships. They're basically a raider that uh, has uh, eight weapons instead of, uh, or doesn't have the experimental weapon. So you get one weapon slot back in exchange for the experimental weapon. So uh, it's you get 5-3, you get 8 full weapon slots. Uh, this is not the first frigate in the game, but frigates are a bit rare. There aren't very many of them. But otherwise, it's, it's very similar to a raider. Overall, they feel like a raider. Uh, so low hole and shield modifiers. And um, they usually don't have as many tactical console slots. Um, they're a little bit more engineering oriented, typically. Um, Bridge officer stations, we have a commander engineering pilot as a full pilot ship. We have an ensign universal, a lieutenant universal command, and two lieutenant commander universals. So it does have pilot and command seating, which is uh, okay. Pilot seating is one of those things, it's kind of hit or miss. Some people love it. I'm one of those people who could leave it. It's, you know, it's not the biggest thing to me. If they did a, a you know, a balancing like they did with Command where they buffed some of those other pilot abilities. That might be kind of interesting, but overall it's a kind of lackluster specialization. However, people really love it for the pilot maneuvers on those full pilot ships, and this one has some special unique pilot maneuvers. I don't think they do anything different, but they have unique animations. We're going to see that in a moment. A lot of wind coming through here. I'm curious to see how my fancy rig is going to block it. Uh, 10 to weapons, 10 to engines, that's pretty good. Dual uh, cannons, battle cloak, raider flanking, pretty good stuff. Uh, it has four tactical, four engineering, and uh, three science consoles. Mastery package, um, it has uh, the traits called proximity alert. So let's have a look here. They got uh, quite a bit of uh, animations and stuff on these blog posts. They've been looking really nice. So I'm not going to hang on this for too long, just give you a chance to look at it. Pretty, I mean, that must have taken them a while. I will say one thing. Uh, the, the money is on the screen. They are putting the effort into these transformation effects. 
I don't know if that's something they wanted to do and they just have a chance to do it now or if you know discovery doing it has sort of forced their hand on it but they are putting in the effort these you know the Jovian had a really cool transformation effect and this one does too so it's pretty pretty cool and uh, unlike the Jovian where you need the console to do it this one is built in which is nice so you don't have to use the console in order to get the transformation effect so that's pretty cool as well and then uh, it's, it's just an innate ability. And then we have the Smasher Assembly Console. This is another cool one. Uh, it, it transforms your ship into more of an arrowhead shape. And then you get to do a ramming attack and you, it's repeatable. So we'll just, uh, I'm not gonna read the whole thing here, but basically uh, you get some charges and you can do it uh, a few times in a row. You go forward about five kilometers and do kinetic damage. And then the passives are like, uh, I don't remember what they are, defense, accuracy, pilot, bridge officer, ability, recharge time. It's fine. Uh, probably a lot of fun. I think this ship is completely designed around all these animations. And I think if you were going to fly it, the stats aren't really going to matter. I don't think anyone's going to fly this for the stats. I think you're going to fly it because you love all these different transformation effects. Uh, I feel like it's just way too expensive just to have as a, you know, a visual toy. So I'm going to review it on Tribble. I probably am not going to pick it up. But, uh, you know, if you're the kind of player who loves all these transformations, uh, this, this is definitely, like, the best one because it, it has multiple transformations. It has the unique pilot uh, maneuvers. So very cool stuff. The trait proximity alert uh, basically is a survival-oriented trait. Basically, if you're near an enemy that's not like a frigate or a fighter, uh, it has to be like a cruiser, a battleship, or a dreadnought. Then you'll get some uh, survival bonuses, shield and hold restoration, damage resistance, stuff like that. So it's a survival-oriented console. You don't have to do much. You just have to be near a high-ranking enemy. It has those 32nd century phasers, which, again, are non-upgradable, but they're promising they'll be available in the future. There will be a new lockbox at some point. It's probably how they're going to be released, but I don't know that for sure. And then um, it has unique pilot maneuvers. The Quajillion Pilot Frigate will employ its morphing abilities instead of the usual jets when executing pilot maneuvers. So that's very, very cool. And uh, in addition to adding this to the Infinity Box, they're also going to be adding a lot of the stuff from the Angel's Wake Box that had not been added previously. So some of the highlights here. Onboard Dilithium Crystallizer. Uh, it's not like a top... Uh, tier trait, but it's a pretty good one and you should be able to get it really cheaply So if you're free to play that's uh, maybe something to look out for and then uh, you for the personal traits The real big one here is Intelligent agent attache this trait is so good and I kind of overlooked it when it first came out Not because I didn't realize it was powerful, but as an engineer or someone who plays an engineer primarily my captain abilities just aren't as good as a tactical captain, so I kind of thought, well, okay, I can cool down my engineering stuff a little faster, but it's not really going to be that big a deal. But the more I use it, even just being able to use, um, you know, engineering fleet more often or any of that stuff, being able to recharge your, or um, relocate mines, you know, because it covers all your captain abilities, not just your career ones. Super powerful trait. Very, very good. And uh, it's super expensive right now. If you were to go on the exchange, it's like 80 million EC right now. That is going to plummet on the 4th as people who uh, have Infinity personal space trait choice boxes are going to be able to open that up and flood the market with it. So if you're waiting to get your hands on one of these, I would recommend waiting until the 4th. Uh, maybe even wait a couple of days after that for the prices to come down. And if you happen to have one left over from an Angel Wake box, uh, sell it now. Sell it while the getting's good. Uh, kit modules, the Ba'ul Obelisk is a really fun one. You probably saw me using that if you watched one of my podcast uh, episodes. I think it was the second one, and um, or the first one where I was running around uh, on Nakara and killing the Tholians. Uh, so it's, it's sort of similar to that uh, pylon one they gave us for free in an event. You create these obelisks and they can connect together and shoot anti-proton and it's a really fun one. So if you like kit modules, that Baul obelisk one is really fun. Uh, of course, a lot of this other stuff is good too. I'm just kind of going over the highlights. The so stuff I think is really nice. 
and there's a vanity shield for people who like that as well. So yeah, I think there is a lot to like here, mostly due to the Angel's Wake stuff going into the Infinity Box, because it's going to make a lot of the really cool stuff or powerful stuff that was in there uh, go down in price. So if you're waiting to get your hands on any of that, you'll be able to get it a lot cheaper after the 4th. And if you're the kind of person who plays the game more for Space Barbie than anything else, uh, and these transformation effects and everything are interesting to you, then I think you're really going to love that as well. So, yeah, I'm not mad at this, and I think there's a big question in the air as to whether, you know, what are they doing with the lockboxes? Or, you know, are they just trying to push out more ships than they can have lock boxes for? Are they increasing the number every year, and so the extra ones are going into the, the Infinity Box? I don't know. I feel like this probably could have gone in the Lobby store. I really wish they had stuck it in the Lobby store instead. The Lobby store hasn't had a new ship in a long time. Uh, but if they did that, it probably wouldn't make them much money because people have a lot of Lobby hoarded right now. And so, you know, people aren't going to be opening boxes just to get it. Instead, the people who've been hoarding Lobby will buy a bunch of them. Then they'll go on the exchange and stuff like that. So, yeah, uh, we'll just have to see where they're going with this, what their big picture roadmap is. But uh, I've been rambling on for long enough, so I'm going to go ahead and end this video. Thank you very much for joining me. Uh, please like and subscribe and all that stuff, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.